Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless jesus said as a sign of his coming and the end of the age there would be an increase in deception false christ who will deceive many wars and rumors of wars nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom famines pestilences earthquakes christian persecution apostasy false prophets and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor as the labor progresses the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes as we get closer to jesus return all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense all of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time We're going to begin with this, though. The celebration and concern in Syria today after rebels seized control of the government over the weekend. You've heard about this toppling a dictatorship that had been responsible for brutal crimes against the Syrian people. President Biden calls it an historic moment of opportunity as the ousted leader of Syria, that's Bashar al-Assad, fled to Moscow, finding safe haven with his Russian supporters there. Even as Syrians cheer, they still can't quite believe it. Bashar al-Assad, the dictator millions feared, escaped to Moscow with his family, just ahead of the Islamist fighters who surged unopposed into the capital Damascus on Sunday. The only shots fired were in celebration. Abu Muhammad Jalani is the man who led this daring offensive. He spoke at the main mosque yesterday with words of reassurance. This is a victory for the Islamic nation, he said, and a new history for the region. Only two weeks ago, the fighters of Hayat Tahrir al-Sham began their dramatic sweep down the length of Syria. The Syrian army just melted away. <laughs> Jubilant citizens tore down symbols of the old regime. A statue of the original dictator, Hafez al-Assad, even became a sled. President Biden acknowledged the seismic political shift. At long last, the Assad regime has fallen. This regime brutalized and tortured and killed literally hundreds of thousands of innocent Syrians. The fall of the regime is a fundamental act of justice. It's a moment of historic opportunity for the long-suffering people of Syria. No one knows who is actually going to run the country or how or whether a new wave of repression and reprisal is just around the corner. Nearly a thousand U.S. troops are based in Syria, with the country a haven for terror groups that target Americans. Now, late today, the U.S. military says it struck 75 terror targets across Syria. At long last, the Assad regime has fallen. Tonight, President Biden reacting to the fall of the Assad regime and quick military action in Syria. Just today, <clears throat> U.S. forces conducted a dozen of precision strikes. Those strikes hitting more than 75 ISIS targets, including camps, leaders, and operatives. The White House hoping to prevent a resurgence by the terror group in the region. We're clear-eyed about the fact that ISIS will try to take advantage of any vacuum. We will not let that happen. The president committing to protecting the roughly 900 U.S. troops he says will remain in the country, while offering a blueprint of future U.S. support. I'll send senior officials from my administration to the region as well to establish a transition away from the Assad regime. Despite this, the president expressing cautious optimism after the rebel takeover of Syria. It's a moment of historic opportunity. While making clear the country's future is still uncertain, acknowledging the connection between the rebels and terrorist groups. Make no mistake, some of the rebel groups that took down Assad have their own grim record of terrorism and human, human right abuses. After the Assad regime collapsed, the Syrian army abandoned its positions in the buffer zone along the border with Israel. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu then gave this statement. We are going to follow events very carefully. 
if we can establish neighborly relations and peaceful relations with the new forces emerging in Syria, that's our desire. But if we do not, we will do whatever it takes to defend the state of Israel and the border of Israel. Damascus, which is seated in close proximity to Israel's northern border and holds the title of the world's oldest continuously inhabited city, is incredibly significant for the Jewish state as well as Bible-believing Christians. A day is coming when Syria's capital of Damascus will be destroyed in one night, in its entirety, as we read in Isaiah 17, verses 1 and 14. The burden against Damascus, behold, Damascus will cease from being a city, and it will be a ruinous heap. Then behold, at eventide, trouble, and before the morning he is no more. This is the portion of those who plunder us, and the lot of those who rob us. Isaiah 17, 9. In that day, his strong cities will be as a forsaken bow and an uppermost branch, which they left because of the children of Israel, and there will be desolation. Isaiah 17, verses 1 and 14, tell us Damascus will be destroyed in a single night. Isaiah 17, 9 suggests it is the children of Israel who caused this desolation, possibly with a nuclear weapon. All of a sudden, there is a bullseye on Damascus, and the prophecy laid out in Isaiah 17 seems to be on the verge of finding fulfillment. Damascus has never been completely destroyed, even during the civil war that broke out in 2011. But the Bible is very clear that a day is coming when Damascus will cease from being a city. One of the worst dictatorships in the Middle East no longer exists. The Assad family ruled Syria with a brutal hand for over half a century, and today Syria is free of their grip. A coalition of Islamic rebels marched across the country and took the capital in less than two weeks. Now Israel and the world are watching to see what comes next. Syrian streets are filled with jubilation as its people celebrate the overthrow of the dictatorial Assad regime. Assad, get me. Assad is gone. Thank God. Thank God. Assad and his father ruled Syria with an iron fist for more than five decades. The notorious prisons where the Assad regime tortured and often murdered hundreds of thousands of dissidents have now been emptied. The deposed leader, Bashar al-Assad, is in Moscow with his family, reportedly receiving asylum from his ally. The nearly 14-year civil war was suddenly capped by a sprawling coalition of Islamic rebels racing across Syria in a two-week sprint to capture Damascus. The main rebel group is Hayat Tarar al-Sham, known as HTS. Its leader started out with Syria's version of al-Qaeda and still has a $10 million bounty on its head from the U.S. Some of the rebel groups that took down Assad have their own grim record of terrorism and human right abuses. You know, we could have an Islamic State arise there, which will have profound negative implications across the region. While many of HTS's factions seem to have moderated, and most of the rebel groups are pledging to protect Syria's religious and ethnic minorities, Biden is wary. They're saying the right things now, but as they take on greater responsibility, we will assess not just their words, but their actions. Some 900 U.S. troops remain in eastern Syria. Their mission is countering the brutal terrorist of ISIS. We're clear-eyed about the fact that ISIS will try to take advantage of any vacuum. It's been a long civil war marked by Assad committing atrocities like using chemical weapons on his own people. Major ally Russia often joined in, its jets bombing Syrian civilians. Iran and its main proxy Hezbollah also took part in slaughtering rebels. In this latest fight, Russia, Iran and Hezbollah didn't come to Assad's rescue as in the past. Russia's attention is mostly on its war with Ukraine. Israel's dismantling of Hezbollah and weakening of Iran played a major role in keeping them from saving Assad. President-elect Trump piled on, writing, Russia and Iran are in a weakened state right now, one because of Ukraine and a bad economy, the other because of Israel and its fighting success. As for Syrian and Israeli relations, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is offering peace. We send a hand of peace to all those beyond our border in Syria, to the Jews, to uh, the Kurds, to the Christians and to the Muslims who want to live in peace with Israel. Still, the IDF rushed to take over the buffer zone around the much disputed Golan Heights between Israel and Syria. It also struck chemical weapon sites and long range rockets to keep them from falling into the wrong hands. Netanyahu says Israel will do whatever is necessary to protect itself. To ensure that no hostile force embeds itself right next to the border of Israel. Here's what Donald Trump said yesterday when asked about 
the future of NATO and America. Do you commit that the United States will remain a member of NATO while you're in office? Uh, again, they have to pay their bills. If they pay their bills, absolutely. But not if they don't pay their bills. But NATO's taking advantage of us. If they're paying their bills, and if I think they're doing a fair, if they're treating us fairly, the answer is absolutely, I'd stay with NATO. But if not, you would consider the possibility of absolutely. getting Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Your thoughts? This is exactly what he said in his first term, Brian. He forced NATO members to start actually investing in our common defense, something that the United States and just a handful of other nations do. But all NATO nations are supposed to spend 2% of their economy on their military. There's still many that don't, including many of the large wealthy nations in Western Europe. It's time they start investing in their military for our shared common defense. If Donald Trump pulls out of NATO, will it force European nations to bond together, fulfilling the prophecy of a revived Roman Empire? The most prophetic event to happen in the 20th century was the regathering of the Jewish people to their ancient homeland in the Middle East, resulting in the creation of the nation of Israel on May 14, 1948. The second most prophetic event was the formation of the European Union. Both of these prophetic events point to the fact that we are living in the end times, right on the threshold of the tribulation and the Lord's return. The book of Daniel tells us a unified Europe will rise in the end times out of the ashes of the old Roman Empire. The book of Daniel also tells us the Antichrist arises from this end times revived Roman Empire. The book of Daniel chapters 2 and 7 is where a unified European sign is revealed. The book of Daniel chapter 9 verse 26 is where we learn where the Antichrist arises from. And after the 62 weeks Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. The end of it shall be with the flood, until the end of the war desolations are determined. The people spoken of are the Romans who destroyed the temple in 70 AD. The prince who is to come is the Antichrist. Since we know the people who destroyed the city, Jerusalem, and the sanctuary, the second temple, are the Romans, and the prince who is to come, the Antichrist, is of the Roman people, we know that the Antichrist comes from and will head the last Gentile empire in world history, a revived Roman empire. The prophecies given to Daniel in these chapters relate to the latter days, as we read in Daniel 2.28. But there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets, and he has made known to King Nebuchadnezzar what will be in the latter days. Daniel's prophecies are based upon a dream which God gave to King Nebuchadnezzar. Interpreting that dream, Daniel concluded that it revealed the succession of Gentile empires, beginning with the Babylonian Empire, followed by Medo-Persia, Greece, Rome, and a revived Roman Empire. The last Gentile world empire will be a confederation of nations that will arise out of the old Roman Empire. And out of that confederation, the Antichrist will arise, using the revived Roman Empire as his base to conquer the world. But this final Gentile empire will be short-lived, for it will be suddenly crushed by the return of the Messiah, who will set up a kingdom which will never be destroyed. It seems as though we are witnessing the fulfillment of these ancient prophecies of Daniel right before our very eyes. Vladimir Putin has signed a treaty offering security guarantees to Belarus, including the possible use of Russian nuclear weapons. The signing of the pact in Minsk follows the publication of a revised version of Russia's nuclear doctrine, which for the first time placed Belarus under the Russian nuclear umbrella. Speaking alongside Belarus's President Alexander Lukashenko, Putin said he was sure the treaty would ensure the security of Russia and Belarus. Lukashenko asked Putin to deploy more advanced weapons in Belarus, including the new Ereshnik ballistic missile that Russia used for the first time in Ukraine last month. Putin has hailed the Ereshnik missile's capability, saying that it's immune to interception by any existing air defense systems. Lukashenko, who's ruled Belarus for more than 30 years and relies on Russian subsidies and support, allowed Moscow to use his country's territory to launch the invasion of Ukraine. Nearly 2,000 years ago, the Apostle John was banished to the island of Patmos as punishment for sharing his faith in Jesus Christ. The Lord gave John a series of visions which described things that would take place in the last days. The visions John saw were recorded and are now known as the book of Revelation. Throughout the scriptures, terrible times are forecast for the end of this present age. The prophet Isaiah describes the earth as empty and wasted. Isaiah 24.1 Behold, the Lord makes the earth empty and makes it waste distorts its surface, and scatters abroad its inhabitants. In the book of Revelation, we read of an hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole world, 
to test those who dwell on the earth. Revelation 3.10 Because you have kept my command to persevere, I also will keep you from the hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole world, to test those who dwell on the earth. The Lord Jesus warns us of great tribulation, which shall threaten the survival of all life on earth. Matthew 24, 21 and 22 For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. The Apostle Paul speaks of sudden destruction that shall come just when men are saying, Peace and safety. 1 Thessalonians 5.3 For when they say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them, as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. As these verses indicate, along with current events, make it plain that world conditions will be characterized by chaos, destruction, and death just before our Lord returns to take control of planet Earth. In the book of Revelation, we read about the poisoning of the oceans, the burning up of the grass and the trees, and the sun scorching people with great heat. The book of Revelation also tells us that horrible plagues will afflict mankind. There will be widespread wars and famines, and that the atmosphere will become so polluted as to reduce visibility by one-third. In the midst of all this devastation, the earth's population will flee to the caves as people cry to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. What could possibly bring about such universal carnage on the earth? Is the Bible describing a nuclear holocaust? Nuclear weapons appear to be specified in Zechariah 14.12. And this shall be the plague with which the Lord will strike all the people who fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall dissolve while they stand on their feet. Their eyes shall dissolve in their sockets, and their tongues shall dissolve in their mouths. The book of Joel gives us detailed imagery that describes something so huge that it seems to encompass the earth and the sky. It is made up of fire and pillars of smoke, and is so vast that it darkens the sun and reddens the moon. Joel 2, 30 and 31 And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. Luke 21, 26 through 28 Men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear, that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in Him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. 
it is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.